Let me discuss the therapeutic strategies in motion. As we begin to understand this disease, the three stages we've been discussing, whether it be yellow, the asymptomatic patient, orange, the patient that is really infected with varying degrees of symptoms, and then finally the critically ill or, or severe. So these therapies or these strategies, I believe, have to be tailored temporally based on where you are, where the patient is, with regard to his state of infection. Obviously, an asymptomatic patient has the ability, first, not even to know he's infected, even though they may test positive of COVID, but the ability to basically self-isolate, not go to the hospital, not burden the healthcare system. But then we have the patient in the intermediate phase, what I call the orange, and then obviously the patient's in the red phase. The reason for this uh, temporal nature or temporal understanding of which strategy you use when is because the patient goes through various stages of the immune response. It is my belief that patients who have a compromised immune system are much more susceptible to this disease because they have absence of what we call the innate protective system of the natural killer cell that floats around our body protecting us not only from cancer, but from any infective disease. So it is in these patients, whether the patient be elderly with diabetes, with cancer, or some form of immunosuppression, that the virus takes advantage of. And in the early stages, I believe, these patients could be benefited from having some form of activation of the NK cells. On the other hand, once the virus has spread within the body, and replicated to such an extent that the patient cannot breathe or have difficulty breathing or has secondary pneumonia, the patient's body now takes over, the immune system takes over and fights so hard that there's what we call a cytokine storm. And clearly in those instances, in order to reduce the cytokine storm to allow the patient to breathe, get off the ventilator, we need a different strategy not a strategy, of, I believe, of, of immune activation, but in fact, the, quite the opposite, a strategy of immune deactivation, the tamping down or cooling down of that period so that the patient then could fight. So I think the complexity of what I call this temporal nature is something we as clinicians are now beginning to learn, but we need to tie that to the treatments or the treatment strategies or the drug development strategies or the molecular strategies with regard to the disease itself. So let me turn now to the strategies with regard to the patients. The question is, and that's now pertinent to discussions in the news, are there drugs that are approved for other indications that we could repurpose? Well, for patients that are in this moderate or what they call orange phase, Indeed, there are drugs that firstly uh, was needed to be in clinical trials and now has been recently approved under the emergent setting, this chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. And how do these drugs work? Well, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine actually works by preventing the fusion of the virus and preventing the packaging of the virus in these things called endosomes by affecting the pH of that virus. And this is really why in patients that potentially are in the yellow or in the orange have the ability to maybe take part in the clinical trial or be part of the treatment of hydroxychloroquine in this early phase of blocking the fusion and packaging of the virus. The next opportunity is could one block the entry of the virus itself into the cell? And again, these are opportunities for patients in the yellow and the orange to participate in which this ACE receptor in which the virus activates and takes on this ACE receptor and finds a way to enter the cell is an opportunity now for drug developers, molecular biologists, to understand the dance of this receptor as it interacts with the spike protein. 
This is really exciting because we now have at our hands these supercomputing GPU systems that can model what we call dynamic modeling every nook and cranny of the sequence of these proteins, amino acids, and find the ability to block the entry of this spike protein into this ACE receptor, and in so doing, create a sponge or a trap and prevent infection in the first place or for patients who already are infected with symptoms from, from getting any more virus from entering the body. And these will serve as what we call antibodies or traps. The next opportunity in patients who have, again, uh, symptoms is to look at this machinery, and as we discussed in the, the last episode, the virus, once it enters, can only survive and replicate when it hijacks, as it hijacks the machinery of our own human body. So it takes over the machinery, it comes in, it breaks up into its different parts, and now takes over the machinery to replicate, and through what we call the Golgi apparatus, and the ER and reassembles. And in this replication uh, of taking our machinery, it repackages and now spreads to the rest of the body. So there are what we call these antiviral drugs, the proteasome inhibitors or the adenosine analogs, such as remdesivir, where these can block and trick the virus so that it actually misreads or creates an incorrect reading and does not assemble. Unfortunately, I believe once the patient hits the phase in which the virus has replicated to such an extent that the patient is in the red phase, that it'll be very hard to overcome that until you get the patient out of that red phase. And then the other opportunity is to find a way in which patients can now activate their own immune system. So again, this is where it becomes tricky because this natural killer cell, I believe, needs to be activated in the very early phase and maybe at the last resort at the later phase in which the natural killer cell, which is in your body, is there to protect you from infection and can then be given early on so that it could kill infected cells uh, through this natural killer cell activity and destroy the infected cell and prevent from you from getting into the red phase. So I think the off-the-shelf natural killer cell or an activation of this natural killer cell by a protein called a superagonist are opportunities, again, in these early phases to prevent you getting into the red phase. Unfortunately, patients go into this red phase, and when they go into this red phase, this is where disaster hits. This is where the virus, I believe, is replicated to such an extent in these patients who are elderly, in these patients with pre-existing conditions, and unfortunately, these patients who are deficient in the first place of their natural killer cells. What happens to these patients is, in fact, they have what we call full-blown SARS, which is really an inflammation and a cytokine storm in the lungs. What do I mean by cytokine storm? We'll be going into that much more detail in the following chapters. But cytokine storm is when the patient's own immune system is fighting so hard to try and protect itself, it causes tissue injury and ultimately death. So what is happening as this patients have what I believe these huge numbers of viruses, the huge viral load. And the viral load occurs in these pre patients with pre-existing conditions. It occurs in the elderly. It occurs in patients with diabetes with cancer. And I believe that happens because these patients, in the first place, had a poor immune system or lower NK cell activity. But ironically, because they have a lower NK cell activity, with the onslaught of this huge viral load, it takes over this lung. What you see on this left is what I call a normal alveolus, or the air sacs inside your lung. These air sacs have a very special macrophage within them, 
uh, called what we, I believe an M2 macrophage. And that macrophage is not designed to kill and remove debris. And as you have this massive infection, you have this debris formation occurring. And with the debris formation occurring, you have fibrosis. And with fibrosis, you have scarring that prevents oxygen from entering from the air into the blood. You have then the immune system trying to fix this problem. And this is what you mean by cytokine storm. So interestingly enough, now is not the time, I believe, to activate the immune system. Now is the time to dampen the immune system. So this um, phenomenon of SARS is very similar to another disease we know in medicine called ARDS, in which the patients, again, have acute lung uh, damage based on sepsis. It's very similar, I believe, to other inflammatory diseases, such as graft versus host, in which patients, after transplantation, the patient's own immune system starts damaging the body. And we can learn from this that there are mechanisms and methods to tampen down the storm and have antibodies, um, IL-6 monoclonal antibodies, for example, to block this inflammation, block this fibrosis. There are mechanisms to activate or change the polarity of these macrophages so that they can actually remove the debris. There are mechanisms to increase the TGF beta so that we can actually slow down and tamp down the inflammation. In China, um, they attempted the transplant or injection of a stem cell called a mesenchymal stem cell which has been used for ARDS, which has been used for um, patients with graft-versus-host disease. And I believe under these circumstances, there are methods to quiet um, the inflammatory storm and to overcome this uh, terrible event and have the patient come off the ventilator quickly and live to fight and activate at that point the patient's immune system or give best supportive care to get the patient out of the ICU. So we have now presented today the therapeutic strategies in motion. While I've shared with you we have this pandemic and this virus here to stay, I'm extremely confident based on all these strategies and based on the amazing speed with which both the regulatory, the government, the private sector, and most importantly, the healthcare and the scientists have moved to actually put in motion these strategies in real time, whether you have severe disease, moderate disease, or critically ill disease, that we will have the insight and the understanding to overcome this disease. I'm confident, however, that the order for us to change this inflection not for just now, but for the future, is a vaccine is needed. I'm confident, based on what I now see, that the vaccine is close at hand. So these therapeutic strategies are real knowledge that we gain from the SARS 2003, and with the power of the supercomputing in our hands, and with the effort, collaborative effort of the world, I think we will have a chance to deal with this virus. Thank you.